Hi everyone, Anne Dahl here with another speed draw of Grimm from my Grimm Days comic strip, and more stories to tell about my crazy life. This week I'm going to be drawing Grimm in the style of Gravity Falls, another cartoon I loved to watch. It was actually one that my son and I loved to watch together, and he loved it so much that when they ended it, he cried because he wouldn't get to see Dipper and Mabel again. So of course I had to add this to my speed draw list. For today's story, I'm going to talk about the two times I traveled to China. Both times were as part of these summer study abroad trips my university offered every other year. First trip was in 2009, right after I graduated with my bachelor's degree, and the second trip was in 2015. I had gotten a promotion that included back pay, and that back pay was pretty much the full amount of the trip's cost, so I decided to go back to China. Each trip lasted about a month to a month and a half and was mainly located in Xi'an. My main motivation to study in China was that I have studied Chinese off and on since I was 15. I'm not very good at it because my studying is not consistent and I go really long stretches without using it at all. But I know enough to more or less take care of myself and a lot of it comes back when I'm in China, whereas when I'm here in the States and I'm not using it and then suddenly I'm supposed to try and use it, not so great. The way these trips were set up, you would spend the first four weeks taking an intensive Chinese language course at the Shanxi Normal University. You would be living on campus but have the freedom to do whatever you wanted outside of class. Once or twice a week you would go on some sort of excursion to various historical sites such as going to see the Terracotta Soldiers, or to do an overnight climb of Huashan Mountain, which is really, really hard, and it's the place you see in a lot of videos where there's those weird giant steps that aren't steps and hanging on the side of a cliff sort of thing. And then the last one or two weeks would be a road trip to various cities and cultural and historical sites that match the theme of that year's trip. The first trip I went on was Silk Road themed, so we traveled to the northwest to cities like Jiayuguan, Turpan, Dunhuang, and Urumqi. While my second trip had an ancient capitals theme and we went to places like Kaifeng and the Shaolin Temple in Henan, and of course to Beijing. The first trip I went on was very hard for me. I had never traveled so far from home, and when I had traveled in the past, I had always had close friends and family with me. The people on that trip were mostly strangers with a couple of friendly acquaintances like my professor and a couple classmates that I just knew from class. Very few people at that time in China spoke English at all. There was It was really hard to find any familiar food, any restaurants that had western themed food, any convenience stores that carried familiar candy or chips or anything like that. And when you could find it, it was much more expensive than everything else. The only way you could watch American TV shows was to buy bootleg DVDs, and supposedly there was an English news show, but it was, we never could figure out when it was on or what channel it was on. I couldn't call home because the international call charges were and still are insane. The internet we had access to was spotty at best, and several common email and social media sites were banned. Um, I tried to Skype a couple times, but it didn't work very well that trip. I was extremely homesick by the second week. But I did eventually adapt, and now I travel internationally whenever I get the chance. That being said, I still had a really rough go of things that first trip. One of the weird things about the first trip that maybe a small number of you noticed when I was talking is that it was the summer of 2009 and we traveled to Urumqi. For those that don't know, there was a major riot that broke out in the city of Urumqi that led to the death of 200 people and ended with the government sending the military in to shut the whole city down. This has eventually led to internment camps for the Uyghur population in that province. And if you don't know about this, you should probably look into it because it is a really messed up situation and needs more people paying attention to it. 
Anyway, we found out when we got back to the States that our group lucked out and left Arunchi an hour before the riots broke out. Within China, we didn't hear anything at all about this. There was no indication that this riot was taking place anywhere on TV, online, anything that we could access. We all only found out when we stopped at our first layover in Seoul and we all started getting emails from people asking if we were okay, uh, if we were safe, that sort of stuff. So that was really weird. And that trip actually had additional weird things to deal with because it was also the anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre, which we weren't allowed to talk about. But one member in our group kept asking all of our teachers and whatnot what their thoughts about Tiananmen Square were. So that was, we were just expecting to be arrested or to have him hauled away at any minute. And then it was also swine flu, which the, about the time that we got there, they had started pulling foreigners off of airplanes and sticking them into quarantine. In that quarantine, it was iffy what kind of treatment you got, what kind of medical attention you got. People were being separated from their children. The day after we got there, we got an email from the American consulate saying, if you were thinking about going to China, you might want to change your mind. So it was kind of a weird trip overall. And through some miracle, we had no major issues. So there are a lot of things that I love about China. I met a ton of really nice people. The food is amazing. Not at all like American Chinese food for those who aren't aware. It is so much better and so different from what uh, you would get at a restaurant here. And the amount of history that is visible everywhere you go is mind-blowing. We actually visited an ancient temple site that was located in the backyard of some people in Xi'an. But there are also things that I hate about China. For example, you cannot sit on the ground in the city ever unless you want the knowledge that you now have both human and animal fecal matter on you. You gotta get used to squatty potties. Uh, public restrooms are rare. It is a 50-50 chance that they will be relatively clean, and it is an even smaller chance that you can use it for free, and you have to provide your own toilet paper. Salespeople are overly aggressive. I have even seen one get in a fist fight with a customer, and I myself have been hit by one with a bag of fruit because I was ignoring her. There is also a very disturbing beggar culture there where orphaned or poor children are given to pimps of a sort and are then disfigured intentionally in order to make them more sympathetic to the people they're begging to. Somehow between 2009 and 2015, my brain more or less forgot about all the negative stuff and kind of romanticized the positive stuff. So I had this strong desire to return to China. All the nice things from before were still there, as well as more access to Western foods for when I was homesick, better public transportation, and the group I was traveling with was made up of more people that I had known beforehand. The negatives were also still there, plus Xi'an had seemed to become less tolerant of foreigners. Either that or my language skills had just progressed enough for me to be aware of what they thought they were saying behind my back. Beijing, on the other hand, was the friendliest place I have ever been to, and the art culture there just makes it such a nice place to visit. If it weren't for the pollution and the handful of people who like to hawk up loogies everywhere, I would actually like to live in Beijing. I had my most interesting conversation in Chinese in Beijing. We had stopped to watch a street artist who airbrushed fake tattoos. When he finished with the customer, he noticed my shoulder tattoo and wanted a closer look at it because he thought it was also airbrushed. When he realized it might be real, he tried to wipe it off to check. Now knowing it was indeed real, he had so many questions but didn't speak a word of English, so I had to answer questions about how it was done, how much it hurt, how long it took, and so on, completely in Chinese. My traveling companions were laughing at me and him because we were both making faces and large gestures to aid in communicating. But he and I managed to have a full conversation about tattoos, 
and he even offered me a free fake tattoo, so it was definitely worth the scene we were making. Overall, I still really like China and wouldn't mind going back if and when things get better. I also encourage others to go if you get the chance. It is certainly a unique experience, especially for those who have spent the majority of their life only exposed to Western culture. So now I'm just putting the finishing touches on the picture. This one was the hardest one so far. Even though it looks like a simple cartoon style drawing, there is way more detail work that goes into the style than in the previous ones. Like the others, the finished image will be available on my Patreon. So if you would like to have access to these images along with other goodies I offer my patrons, please go and subscribe. I will put a link to it in the description below along with links to my Facebook, Instagram, and Webtoon pages. If you liked my drawing or enjoyed hearing me talk about my travels to China, then please click the like button. And if you would like to see more drawings or hear more stories, then please subscribe to my channel. So until next time, bye!